sit there and drink tea and smoke six packs of cigarettes and say, oh, you want to try one more take of that song? Okay, we'll go in and see if we can beat what we have. And sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. And so then we'd move on to the, so that was sort of just our, our day, you know, it was never, uh, it was never work. And there was a, you know, a lot of <laughs> fun talking and, you know, and every record's about the same with them. You know, there's not other that the, the studios venues would change. Uh, it was the same procedure every time. It was just amazing. Every time, you know, you set up, like I said, you got to be ready in the studio because they, they walk in there and have a little tune. They may, uh, you know, we may play a little bit to sort out a tempo. Sometimes we'll, we'll time a click track to whatever tempo they're playing to. We'll play a little click track. Phil will start counting out and then we turn the click off and then they just play the song. And, you know, a lot of times they'd get it in like three or four takes. You know, each take just got a little better, a little better, and then and then it's done, you know. And then we take a long break, you know, maybe an hour, two hours. Brian Johns and Angus Young, I'm guessing the rest of the guys too, they like to smoke in studio. Yeah. Is that allowed? Like, is that is that a thing that's allowed? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, the studio <laughs> makes them sign a thing that, you know, after the fact that they pay, they, they pay for the fumigating of the place again. Oh, interesting. Definitely on the last record, there were, we, none of us smoked in the studio. Even Angus would come outside for smoking. And, and I think Angus and Brian are the only two in the band that still smoke. Maybe Phil did a bit, but it was more the brothers, Malcolm and Angus, once they got going, it was it was definitely three packs a day. It was crazy. That's nuts. <laughs> the yeah. smoke in the recording room, wouldn't that interfere with the, the recording at all in any way? Malcolm swore that it helped the sound. The nicotine would get on the tape and it helps the sound. He swore by that. You think so? That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see any physical... Uh, reason for that but but mal would swear by that when angus comes in to do his solos you know uh he he never comes in with a written solo so you know we'll come in and okay go and he'll play a thing wow that's great and he says, oh, do you want another one okay yeah let's you know see see what else we got but he'll play it completely different so mm -hmm. sometimes you'll do five or six of those takes and you go well now which one do we pick because they're all great so then yeah. you try and put a comp together and you know, piece a bit from here and a bit from there. And then that doesn't always work because sometimes, you know, he'd be playing up on his neck and then when he'd want to go to the next piece, he's down here. So it wouldn't sound natural, you know, but you're trying to get all the best bits in, in one solo. So sometimes that's tricky. And then sometimes you're going, well, that was a great bit, but we can't make it work with all those other great bits. So that's just, just that first solo you played, and let's go with that. It just sounded the best. So, you know, that's the only time you have to work with Angus. He's, he's very quick. Sometimes that was second and third take. I think the most we'd take a song is maybe eight or 10 tries, but you know, we'd do one, maybe two takes and you know, they'd be really intense and then we'd stop and they'd go have a cup of tea and a cup, bunch of smokes. Like I say, sometimes for an hour or two hours and then finally say, Oh gee, it's three o'clock. Let's, let's give that another go. So they'd go in there and tune up and then, Bang, and away they go. And, you know, you could hear each different take was getting better and better and better. And then finally, the next one take wasn't as good as the last take. Sometimes we'd try another one. No, that wasn't as good. So we'd go, okay, let's take that take. Gotcha. Is it the same with Cliff when it comes to bass? Yeah, he's a machine. <laughs> you know, him and Phil, just they just lock. And I think that's, you know, another secret to that band that, you know, uh, Phil and, and Cliff just lock together and just mm -hmm. have that real simple sounding thing so that, the guitars can sit on top of that and just kind of smack you in the face. So, you know, he, he just sits there and does his thing. You know, <laughs> he's, he's so quick and so easy to work with. And then there's absolutely no layering. Like I said, it's just Mal, one guitar, Ang, one guitar. And on some songs, sometimes we like throw sort of like little power chord things in choruses just to have the chorus feel like it lifts a little more, mm -hmm. but they'd be way back in the mix. You wouldn't even notice that they're, they were in there. You know, now after all that's done, sometimes they'll go through and Angus will do lead guitars and stuff. And sometimes that's when they do the little <laughs> sound, you know, so there'll be other little sounds on top of that, but no doubling or tripling of, of rhythm guitars or anything. 